What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week and every week, swipe right, it's Desra. And sitting across me sitting across from me this week and every week is Is that what this? Yeah, well I was just gonna say you you've put me in the awkward position of saying that you're my swipe left. It's right. just sad. I don't know. Is but anyways, it's Brian Paul. So I I'm I'm <laughs> As a single person, I should probably know this. Yeah. Swipe right's good, right? That means you are interested? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Text it, comment below. Yeah. Uh, or, or just... Or, or maybe I'm just pretending I don't know to cover my elaborate second life. That's <laughs> right. This week and every week on Why We Love PlayStation We VR, talk about second life. We... No, I don't think that's a thing either. <laughs> uh, although, I mean, if they ever bring it to PlayStation VR, I'm down. We dive into the PlayStation VR back catalog. We pull out a game or six and uh, yeah. and talk about them for a little bit and tell you whether they're worth your time. Uh, sometimes games get better over time and sometimes they age poorly. And sometimes we get better over time and realize the stuff we thought was awesome wasn't. Or vice versa. We age with the system. Yes. Excellent. A whole well, year. What games are we going to talk about this week? We're not talking about games at all this week. Oh, damn it. Yep. I hate these weeks. <laughs> So this week, uh, we decided we're going to revisit one of the most notorious genres of experience. Well, wait, no, there's no no good way to end that sentence. Uh, one of the most controversial bits of owning a VR system, and that are, that is, oh my God. Should we just start over? I want to start again. So this week, we're going to talk about one of the most controversial pieces of the, uh, the VR owner's life. I liked your first version better. Yeah, I know. I just, Wow. We're going to talk about experiences. We're going to talk about experiences. You know, you yeah. know those things that like are just just awful and that we're all sick of and that like we just want real games. Remember, you see the comments yeah. below, they're, they're already <laughs> typing them. They're like, I hate experiences. I want big AAA open world games. More Skyrim. Yeah, well, I mean, we already have Skyrim, so you're welcome. More Skyrim. <laughs> well, go play some more Skyrim. I'm not stopping you. All right, sweet. I'm, I'm out All of right. here. All right, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to bat for experiences, though, because here's the thing. I mean, yes, we do love our games, and, and the games are fantastic, mm -hmm. but, you know, there is something unique that a VR setup lets us do and that is have these experiences and now that doesn't mean that all experiences are great just like when i say i'm a gamer and i like gaming doesn't mean i think all games are great so we're going to talk about uh, tonight we're going to talk about some experiences that we uh thought were noteworthy for good and bad reasons okay yeah all right, well do you want do you want to you know what before we before we start talking about yes specific ones okay okay um can we can we just talk about why why experiences have such a bad reputation? Um, yeah, yes, we can. Okay, and, and I mean, in part part of my part of my angry gamer rant okay. a second ago, more Skyrim. Yeah, it's it's kind of true, right? Yes, we 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 put a ton of money into buying a PlayStation Four, mm -hmm. whether it be the OG or the Pro. Yep, we get these move controllers. Right, yes, we do. We've got the VR headset itself. Absolutely. We bought an aim controller. Well, he did. I bought an aim <laughs> controller, and and then and then somebody's like, "Hey, here's this here's this five minute thing that uses n almost none of the stuff that you bought, mm -hmm. and, and mostly not to the it, the advantage of VR at all." In many cases, yeah. So, um, so, so, why? so, so, why, why, why do these things exist at all? Um, yeah, I, I mean, you've got a couple different options. One is it's a promotional tool for a movie or product or something like that. Right. Uh, it could be a little tech demo. It's like, you know what? We don't even know if we can make a VR game, but we can throw a couple hours into making an experience where you're just stationary and, you know, hey, we're just learning how to make the user interface work. Yeah. Um, which is which is fine. I don't you know I don't begrudge these companies the need to do these kind of demos to prove to themselves and to the public that they can do this thing. Yeah. And I don't even begrudge anyone for making a promotional item. Right. I think where we certainly agree is I really have a problem with them charging us exorbitant amounts of money, exorbitant amounts of money for these kind of experiences. And some of the games we're going to talk about, or some of the experiences we're going to talk about tonight, are experiences some of them are very short experiences some of them are free experiences mm -hmm. and some of them are ridiculously overpriced yes um so that's probably a good jumping off point one of them is free and ridiculously overpriced but <laughs> which one which <laughs> game would you like to start off with this evening well after that dose of negativity i want to go a little more positive okay. i'd like to talk about a game that actually i was really excited about 
well, a game, an experience that I was really excited about when I saw the trailer for it. Yeah. And that's uh, Manifest 99. This actually came out pretty recently, uh, beginning of September 2017, um, and by uh, Flight School. Uh, the, the, first, the first game. Yes, this is the first game. And, man, this thing is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's definitely one thing that, you know, as a gamer, you see VR and you say, oh, geez, the graphics is so much lousier and blah, 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 blah. And one thing I'm actually kind of, what's kind of nice about VR in some ways is it lets us sit back and realize that, you know what, being able to count every piece of stubble on your character's face doesn't necessarily make it a good game. Yeah. Um, you know, you can have lower graphical quality and still have amazing graphical quality. Yeah, counting every piece of stubble on somebody's face, it might be good like to add immersion when you're playing on a flat screen. Mm -hmm. But when you're actually placed inside of that world, uh, I mean, I don't care if the people look like they're, you know, they look like Kratos from God of War and PlayStation 2. Yeah. Because because that's all the polygons I need to, to be immersed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Manifest 99 is kind of a, well, I guess an allegorical sort of tale. Uh, it's basically you are... Well, you're not sure what you are at first, but you're stranded on this train, and you the way you interact with the world, you're not using move controllers, you're not using DS4. The only thing you're doing is looking at other characters, and if you see a little glint from their eyes, you can take their place. Uh, and most of the game, that's taken the, the place of crows. There are crows all sorts of, uh, over the train, and you look at the crow, you see the world from their perspective instead. I mean, it's very, very similar to um, Psychonauts and the Rhombus of Ruin, where yeah. where you inhabit that person, uh, you inhabit that person, and you look around as them. It's basically just a clever way of using teleportation to get around your world. Yeah, and um, you know, it's it's hard to talk too much about this without spoiling anything. Very good. Point. I will say the 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 beauty of the characters, and one thing, the animation. Mm. These characters you can just see so much emotion in how they're moving around and uh, I'll, I'll ask you this question here uh if you think wally was well all right wally was a story a movie made and told with very very little to no dialogue if you think that was stupid this game is not from you if you think that game that was brilliant because they were able to tell the story without dialogue this game is for you i love wally yeah wally's great Okay. I guess this game's for me. <laughs> no, I, I love Manifest 99. If you're more, if you're curious about it, uh, go check it out. On uh, we have a review up. Yep. Uh, and uh, and I and I really enjoyed it. Spoilers, uh, but but this is this is where things start to get a little tricky. Yeah. Because it's about twenty minutes long. It is. It's yep. I I found everything there is to find. That there's like objects you can pick up, mm -hmm. and I found everything on my first playthrough. Yeah. Uh, you said you missed something. There was something I missed because for a second I was trying to play a game instead of, you know, have an experience. And so I was like rushing through the section that felt really fast paced, which I guess is kind of a, a strike in its side because I, I got wrapped up more in the emotion they, um, than actually thinking about the experience. So but. did you have to play through the entire game again or is there like a s scene select? There is a scene select, but what it does is it brings you back to the beginning of each character story yeah. and then you play through the rest of the game okay you can't really like exit out gotcha um but it's not like the ending doesn't change or anything as far as i notice 5.99 5.99 here's 20 uh 20 minutes yeah 5.99 if you're doing that kind of math it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense nope. uh for me it was actually I, I could honestly care less about the game part of this uh it was a really moving and beautiful kind of artistic experience yeah so I think it was worth it in that, but for I, I, your mileage will definitely vary. Yeah, you know already from at the beginning of this episode when you're like, oh, they're talking about experiences. I'm out of here. Yeah. Like if you did one of those, then I'll, you probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't buy any of these games. Yeah. Uh, but but if you're somebody that like just loves to experience new and interesting worlds, especially ones that are well crafted and well told, uh, have well told narratives, uh, yeah. you know, going throughout them, then this I'm gonna say. Is, uh, is is something you should probably check out. If you want, if we want to use our rating scale for for all of these, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say just because it won't appeal to everybody. Mm -hmm. Whatever, it's a two. Wait, wait, wait for a sale. You can probably get it for three dollars yeah. instead of six dollars. 
It's yeah, I, I would say for ninety nine percent of our audience, it's a two. Uh, if you're that one percent who's like, you know what, I want to see something beautiful and unique and interesting, and I don't really care how much I have to pay for it, uh, it's a one. I think I think you're not giving our audience enough credit. Okay. I'm going to say half of our audience is is totally down for some games as art kind of BS. Okay, except, <laughs> apparently, except for that guy. Sorry, except for that guy. Yeah, yeah. we love you. All um, right, next up we've got. Um, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about uh, The Last Guardian yes. VR Demo, yeah, they, they called it. Now, the strange thing about the name of this, mm-hmm. it's they announced it at, um, oh God, the PlayStation Experience yes. uh, 2017. And when they announced Wait, it... Wait, Experience? Oh, no. Mm. It, it, it used to, The PlayStation Experience <laughs> used to be such a cooler name until these things came around. All of around. a sudden, yeah. Uh, but The Last Guardian VR Demo, they got it, when it got announced at PlayStation, PlayStation Experience, they called it uh, the they called it the Blast Guardian experience or experience. VR experience. Yes, and then it came out to the store and it was called the Last Guardian VR demo. And it, so now everyone's like, you know, conspiracy Wait, theorists. Mm. You know, it's like, it's like, hey, is there, is this a real thing going on yeah. here? Is there? A, yeah, but in to the conspiracy theorist credit, here we got this VR demo with really a world that we've saw before mm-hmm. in the Last Guardian proper with this creature we saw before, Trico. Or Trico, if you're Jeremy King, um, <laughs> and um, and and it's like they they managed to get not only the big bird dog but also yep. his world into VR. Yes, and almost seamlessly. Yeah, and, and so I played this. I actually didn't play The Last Guardian. Okay. Yeah, because you know, again, I'm a recent Sony convert, so you're, calm down. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and I would say it was just so like. Again, immersive, immersive, immersive. Yes, we use this word so much, but you're sitting there and you see like the little tail kind of flicking up. Like, oh, what's that? You lean over and all of a sudden it just hops down in front of you. And okay, I will say they, they kind of overuse the rumble just a little bit. Oh, yeah? Like, well, just every time it shifts his weight, really, the whole room shakes. But anyways. I mean, he's gigantic. Well, he is gigantic, but yeah. Um, but it just does feel so real. You see kind of the muscles rippling under the skin. It's just right here in front of you, this enormous thing. And. Yeah, this is, you know, kind of the, the way this experience was made to happen. There's, there's a word you're missing in yeah. this, and that's adorable. Adorable, yes. Right? Now, when I played The Last Guardian on my PlayStation 4 and played it on a flat screen, I was like, this is cool, and I like Trico, but I don't really have a real desire to keep moving forward. I made it through like 50, 60, 70% of the game, and I was like, I just kind of lost interest, yeah. which is weird for me. Team Eco games, oh man, Eco, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, these are some of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. So to lose interest in this one that we've been waiting a decade to play, like yep. it, it was it was tough for me to put it down. Um, but when but when Trico comes up near me in VR, mm-hmm. like I will say to the developer's credit, like he comes up and he like kind of try to, he kind of nuzzles you, yeah, like, yeah. With the, and, and, and it doesn't clip through the camera. No, I know. I, I was always waiting for it to clip, and now yep. he got right up there, and it never clipped through. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, this is mad cool. Like this is the yep. closest I feel like I've ever been to anything in VR. Yep. And now I just want to snuggle. It was adorable. And now, and I was like, now, now I want the whole game in mm-hmm. VR. But what we got is a, is a basically it is very much an experience. Yes, you teleport around, and you basically pick up. Uh, barrels, mm-hmm. and you feed them to Trico, and you just kind of, and that's what basically gets him going, moving from room to room. Right. And and there's not very much else to it. There's nope. one you have to open a door for him, and then you do get on his back at one point, mm-hmm. which is strange because the whole time they're making you teleport around, and then you get to teleport up on his back or yep. up on his head, and then he does this thing where he like starts walking. It's not teleportation. No. Nope. You're moving, and then he like does like a even like a little a jump, a little jump, yeah. a little a mini flight. Right, mm-hmm. and that's not teleportation either. Nope. So, man, they really were like, "Listen, get acclimated for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to take you on a mini ride." And uh, man, it felt good being up on his back. It did, yeah. It, um, it was neat. Yeah, again, they just it does so much work being in VR and feeling just the weight and the presence of him there. It's that actually the moment when you ride up on his back. It actually means something, as opposed to you know other games where you've ridden on large things, you know, Sea Shadow of the Colossus, where it's like, okay, it's just this big, you know shape that you're on top of now that you've seen him you've been in the space with him you feel a sense of his physicality and you're just like holy crap this thing is huge and i'm riding it yeah, yeah. uh six seven minutes maximum yeah that. super short super, super short, short but, but also super free super free yeah. and i gotta say that like this is how 
VR experiences should be done. Yeah. Like this is this this going forward should be like the template. Be like, all right, well, here you go. Like, you know, you, it, it checks a few boxes. Yeah. You know, you get to the scale of Trico in, in VR is incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, being able to explore the world a little bit yep. and interact a little bit and it's free. It's kind of perfect. If if they let yeah. me, if they gave me like full locomotion on top of all of this, I would have been like, yeah, this this is the best thing going. And this goes to my point at the beginning. This is, I mean, I think this is very much Sony saying, would you guys like this? Mm-hmm. Is this something you want? Yeah. You know, they they put some work into it. I mean, I I, I say I'm, I'm sure this was a ton of work. Um, oh yeah. No, they probably had a lot of the assets already, but hey, um, I'm I'm totally down. If they made this into a full game. I'd, yeah. I'd buy it full price, day Absolutely. one, no questions asked, and I would play. And yeah. if it was just the Last Guardian mm-hmm. that I lost interest in halfway through, <laughs> uh, well, I'd finally, I'd finally play through it. Yeah, because because now I get to live in this world in, instead of just seeing it from a distance. Yeah, so you know, thumbs up. This is absolutely kind of, one. Yeah, absolutely download one. it. It's worth yep. your time. It's, no question. It's free, so also it's also worth your money. <laughs> so on the flip side of that, let's I'd go for sweeter. another free experience. Mm. Um, and oh well, one where we have some interactivity. We'll go for what do you think? Yep, do it. Spider Man. Yep. Okay, Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, it was free. I'll, I'll say that. And that's about where the positive comments stop. Yeah, this was uh, this is one of my early VR experiences. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Um, well, when I first got my my own system, I was like, oh yeah, this just free just came out. Spider Man, perfect. No. <laughs> no. Not perfect. No. The, the, no. The, the bad thing about about Spider-Man being in VR mm-hmm. is that the things you're envisioning while you're downloading this yep. experience is drastically different than what they give us. When yeah. you be, when you're Spider-Man, when you go I get to be Spider-Man in VR, mm-hmm. what's like the first thing you think of? You think of? I want to sit in a lawn chair on the rooftop. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at too. Yep. That's... What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if maybe they were afraid of motion, you know, uh, or something like a lot of uh, developers seem to be. But yeah, really, like, okay, I'm a Spider-Man, I get suited up, great, Tony Stark gave me a a suitcase, I get to put on the new high-tech Spider-Man stuff, and then I spend the rest of the game sitting on top of my rooftop, taking pot shots at balloons. Balloons, random crap, and they... And, and the great thing is they, they, they're like, here's how to change the, your type of shot. Mm-hmm. You know, you can go from this type of web shot to this type of web shot. And t- it's like a tutorial teaching sure. you how to do yeah. it. And I was like, this is great. I can't wait until they give me something real to fight. And no, I, again, the tutorial is the game. At, at, that, at the end. So, yeah, there's just basically this lousy shooting gallery. And I did lousy. Yep. Um, and then at the, at the end, it's like, okay, the, you, you hear some kind of rumbling. Yep. And it turns across like, great, the game's gonna start. I'm gonna start swinging. No, it's basically a, a glorified quick time event, yeah. where like you use your webs to catch a piece of building, and the vulture, the Michael Keaton vulture, kind of flies up and flies away. Yeah, uh, it's real bad. Three. I, I I don't even even though you're not gonna give anyone any money, yeah. I don't want the people who made this to say, oh, we have ten million and one downloads because of these folks. Yeah. No. Here's here's the uh, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. The very day PlayStation VR came out, yes, the, the, the fateful day of back in October thirteenth, two thousand sixteen. Mm-hmm. I get the tattoo; it's back there somewhere. <laughs> um, I hope it's right. I hope that was the right date. I just haven't checked. Um, Windlands also came out. Yeah, and Windlands is the best Spider-Man game ever made, mm-hmm. and it's not a Spider-Man game. Yep. They let you use the move controls as this experience does, and let you in. But this lets you like. Oh man, be Spider Man. Yeah, you know, like you shoot those webs. It's it's like you know grappling guns and stuff. But it's, it's the same thing. Oh man, it feels so good. It feels what Spider Man should feel like. Yeah, that was on launch day. Yeah, like there's no way the developers of Spider Man, the VR experience, didn't play Windlands and go, oh fuck, this looks hard. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it's they, it had Spider Man has so much potential in VR and as a video game in general that this is this was just a letdown. I agree, it's not worth your time. No. This is absolutely a three. Yeah, uh, again, this is a free game. Yeah. We're saying is is a three. So keep it that just because when people talk about Spider Man Homecoming, yeah, the movie, mm-hmm. it's like it's a great movie. That most people have said it's a great movie. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet myself. I mean, yeah. but the point is, I don't think of the great movie that I haven't seen. I think of this thing. Yeah. And so it is possible for a bad game or a bad VR experience mm-hmm. to tarnish an awesome reputation. 
Speaking of which, when do you... well, this is actually not quite exactly that at all. Okay. Okay. Wait. Although now I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I was think I was thinking about the wrong one. Okay. So the next one we want to talk about. Yeah. Also free. Yes. Stranger Things, the VR experience. Yeah. I, I don't know how to feel about this one. I mean, yeah. again, it was free. It was free. Uh huh. And it's very non-interactive. Yeah, uh, but less interactive than even Spider Man. But I don't. So I think the difference is with Spider Man. You know, it's it's a very clear example of, you know, uh, writing you know the mouth writing checks that uh, its ass can't catch. Yeah. Cash. You know, it's it's, it's probably it's going to be the Spider Man experience. You're going to do this. The Stranger Things never claims to be that. Um, you know, it doesn't really claim to be much more than a trailer you can sit on the inside of and watch. Okay. Um, you know, and, and that's what it is. So I think it delivers what it promises, but it doesn't really promise that much. So Stranger Things. Yeah. Starts off. Mm-hmm. You're sitting in blackness with like some specks of dust flying by. Yes. And you're hearing audio clips from the show. From the show. Yeah. It's not a scene from the show. It's like a few random audio clips that they stitch together that don't actually work very well together. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, it's like, okay, here's some voices uh, from people that you, you're probably familiar with if you've right. seen the show. Yeah. Um, and and then they put you into, oh God, I hope I get the name right, Joyce Byers living room, mm-hmm. the iconic room with uh, with with the, the Christmas lights, all and the, the Christmas letters. lights. Yeah, you have the hole in the wall, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't seen the show, it's not really going to spoil anything. Uh, yeah. But once you see the show, it'll it'll all make sense. And yeah, even that. I mean, if you're on the internet for more than thirty seconds, you've seen the imagery from from this. Yeah, and so let's 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 walk them through this a little bit. Start you off in the middle of the living room. Well, I mean, we don't want to get too far. We'll give the whole thing away. <laughs> we'll give the, we're gonna give the whole thing away. <laughs> Starts you off in the middle of the living room. You have yeah. a flashlight in one hand, mm-hmm. and the other hand does nothing. No, it like teleports and stuff or whatever. Well, but but no, no, only teleports when you can teleport, and only to the place it wants you to teleport. Yeah, there's only two places ever to teleport to, yeah. uh, and this is only about a two minute experience. Yeah. So once all the Christmas lights start lighting up, and then. Uh, a monster goes by the ho- hole, the hole in the wall. Right, but and if you don't happen to be looking at the hole at exactly the right time, yep. you ain't gonna see it. Yeah, both Michelle and Jeremy missed the missed that completely. I get it though. Mm. <laughs> uh, it does follow his directions better. <laughs> it's like just follow the Christmas lights. How hard is this? Yeah, um, and then uh, and then you can teleport to the kitchen mm-hmm. where there's where there's inexplicably a chandelier swinging back and forth. Well, sure. And then you can teleport behind you to answer the phone. Right. And then a monster walks up and attempts to scare the crap out of you. Yeah. And then it, it plays a trailer for Stranger Things Season 2. Yep. And, and that is it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't have as many bad feelings about this one as I do the Spider-Man for Same. some reason. Because yep. it's just not as disappointing as the Spider-Man one. But it's not... I mean, if you've seen the show already, this isn't going to add anything to your experience. And if you haven't seen the show, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So... For me, I, I don't I don't know quite what the difference was either. I don't hate this like I hate Spider Man. Yep. Uh, I downloaded I downloaded this uh, from the Australian store. I, I don't even know it. Bet by this point, by the thing, time this thing airs, it better be on the U.S. store. We, yep. It was promised to us forever ago. It better be. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> <What> is- <laughs> I'm gonna write an angry letter. My <laughs> senator is gonna be hearing from me. <laughs> and you know, it this does- isn't about net neutrality, is it? No, it's about a video game. <laughs> Click. Right. Seriously. Uh, they, actually, they probably listen to that because they're not <laughs> listening to us about net neutrality. Um, so it, it's it's free. It takes you two minutes to get through. It's, it's there's it, a good chance it'll take you longer to download than it will to play. Oh, the chance is real and <laughs> and actually pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't hate it, but there's nothing to do. I don't know. I I like anything scary. Yeah, I if think, you're a Stranger Things completist, sure, why not? Yeah. But other than that, I would say the two, I guess. It's, I mean, two if it's on sale. <laughs> if it's on sale from yeah. free. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Were they giving me money? I don't think this is working. Yeah. Just, it's all right. It, it, it's right. You're not missing anything if you don't play it. And yeah. if you do play it, then you're not really gaining anything either. So let's go to the uh, the opposite. Um, yeah. Well, what do we want? Do we want to do our movie tie-in or we want to end on a positive note? <laughs> Let's let's do the movie tie-in. Okay. Okay. So uh, here is kind of the polar opposite of what we just talked about. This is a 
This is everything we hate about movie experiences. Yeah, it's a promotional tie-in. Yeah. Um, it's not free, very much not free, but it's also super short. And that is Ghostbusters. The, the interview? Ghostbusters now hiring. Now hiring. Now hiring. Yeah. $6.99. And worth every penny. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> so this thing sets itself up pretty well, mm -hmm. right? It's a great tutorial. It's <laughs> because that's all it is. Yeah. So it starts you off. It throws you into uh, right in front of the Ghostbuster Firehouse mm -hmm. in the streets of New York. And to and to be honest, it looks great. It does look it pretty looks damn good. So good. Yep. Yeah. And then and then you hear a voice, and it's right. Patton Oswalt voicing Mookie. Is that his? Yeah. And it, and here's the thing. Like, is the only reason they charge for this to pay Patton Oswalt? I mean, I, let's hope so. Because <laughs> let's, let's hope our money went to I directly to Patton Oswalt. I can't understand any other reason why he would be involved with this. Nope. Yeah. No, I mean he he's a video gamer, so like maybe he just like wanted yeah. to be in a game. But I, I think I'm just making that up. I don't know. Just comment below, Patton, if you're watching. Like he's not watching. There's no way. If you are watching that, oh seriously, comment below. Just, oh, yeah. Um, but Hi. so uh, so oh my God, is he watching? Oh, now I'm locking up now. Now I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not watching. Yeah. But but he was the best part of this thing. Uh, and and he introduces yep. he introduces the game. He. he mm -hmm. A little bit of a tutorial. He right. actually, I think that's his sense of humor in this. I'm hoping they let him write the character because yeah. it was kind of funny. And then, and so, and then you, you, I don't know, you, you meet Slimer. Yeah. Right? It comes out of a food stand or something. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the firehouse. Yes. And they actually let you use your proton pack and catch a ghost. A ghost. A. Once. A one ghost. Yep. And I got to say, I really enjoyed catching that ghost. Okay. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. Sure. Right? I grew up with the movies. I watched the real Ghostbusters cartoon, mm -hmm. which didn't age well at all. No. Sorry. That sucks. Um, and, uh, and and I've always wanted to be a Ghostbuster and to be able to use my move controllers to be like, you know, throw out a trap and, and you know, proton pack and the whole deal and uh, don't cross the streams. There's only one yeah. of us, so it's <laughs> impossible to cross the streams. I love that. I love that they let me be a Ghostbuster. For a moment. Well, see, I was even even that that though. I was a little disappointed by like, okay, you hit the button, you got him, but then you really didn't do anything yeah. about it. It's not like you know, say, oh, I don't know, Luigi's Mansion, oh. where you actually once you catch the ghost, there's actually some other stuff you have to do to kind of wrangle it into, yeah. you know, what you need to do. So, but even at that, it's like, okay, maybe I did have fun with that part, and, and that was it. Yeah, you put you you put the ghost into the uh, into the containment yep. uh, system. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. And in the basement, and then they're like, "Oh, we got a car. We got to go. We got to jump in the car." And then you jump into the car, and you're like, "Sweet, I get to drive Ecto one." No, you don't. And then and then it fades to black, and it's like, "Stay tuned for chapter two or episode two or whatever the hell." It's yeah. Called. Holy uh, crap! And what a disappointment. If this, I mean. Again, if this was the tutorial for a larger game, yeah. great. It makes total sense. That's what the way it's paced. It shows you your basic skills, but it's not. It just ends at that. You do each each task it shows you how to do, you do exactly once. There is one jump scare uh, hidden in there if you explore the room a little yep. bit. Not, no spoilers. Don't buy this. So, no. um, Yeah, I, I'm just going to, you know what, enough talk. It's a three. I don't reward these people. See, this bothers me a bit because, yeah. like I said, like I, I, I Pat and Oswald, mm -hmm. you know, what a warm greeting you get from that, and then, and then getting to actually, you know, use, uh, use the proton pack yep. to, to to try to take down a ghost, and I don't know. I if just, this was free, if this was free, yep. it would be like, yeah, you need to check this out. This mm -hmm. is very cool. Hopefully, they make a full game out of this. Yeah, and hopefully, they make a full game out of this, but. But for, my, who came up with the price of six dollars ninety nine cents? Who was like, "This is a fair price for what, what five minutes?" Yeah, it's, a, it's a playable commercial. It and it's it's it. unfortunate because yeah. it has this pisses me off because because it has so much potential mm -hmm. and and when you, when something actually has potential like Spider Man, I feel like the, the graphics weren't even good. Yeah, but this looked pretty nice. It looked great. There was a lot of care. I mean, there were a lot of details put into the room. Yeah. You know, you can see like I. I I don't even know if it's spoilers, but you know, magazine covers of people who were in the movie, kind of uh, th yeah. you know, th thrown around, and it does reward some snooping around and looking around. There are some some new things you can pick up on, so it's not like this was half-assed or anything. No. But again, it's just such a short experience that I, I cannot find any way to justify the price. I can't either. Uh, and so because of that, mm -hmm. I'm calling this a two. If you can hmm. get this on sale for like two, three bucks, it's like. All right, I because I, here's the thing. Yeah, 
I'd rather, I would rather, let's see, what 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 other game do we talk about that charged money here? Manifest 99. Yeah. Manifest 99 tells a great story, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't let you be a Ghostbuster. Not even for a minute. And so <laughs> this game lets you be a Ghostbuster for a couple minutes. And I'm like, I, I, I will pay you two, three dollars to be a Ghostbuster, but not seven dollars. I did, yeah. by the way, buy it for seven dollars. So if you're wondering, I'm not cheap. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not very <laughs> happy about it. But yeah, it was, it was I don't know. There, there were some core mechanics there that I really enjoyed and, and I just wanted more. Uh, and, and they didn't give it to us. And now I'm angry. So we'll have to add one more to the Brian Paul scale. One, can I throw things? Two, can I be a Ghostbuster? Those are <laughs> oh yeah, so few so few games are gonna <laughs> gonna let me vote that way. Well, actually, you can do that. You can do both of those. You can pick things up and throw them in this game, and you can be a Ghostbuster. So wow. that should be really. It, it should be a one, yeah. Absolutely. So last, we're gonna go for something that's uh, it's kind of an outlier in this conversation. Yeah. But I wanted to bring it up because honestly, out of everything I we've talked about tonight, I had the most fun with this. Okay. And this is gonna sound insane for anyone out there who knows me, but NBA Two K VR. It's insane. I am not a sports guy. Nope. The very fact that his, this had NBA on it was like, oh, dude, I'm out. Yep. But you know what? It was when I um, looked at it, it was on sale on the store. So I was like, you know what? Oh, it's worth checking out for. It was stupid cheap. It was like two ninety nine or something. It was crazy when I when I bought it. And just FYI, it's not usually that cheap. It's no. usually like fifteen bucks. Yeah. But this was a blast. Yeah. This is so much fun. It is an experience. You are standing stationary, but it's closer to a game than any of the the rest of these we talked about tonight. Agreed. Um, you know, it does an amazing job of getting you like hyped up. Like the the game starts. Well, the first game you know goes through the warning screens, or whatever. But once it starts, you're actually like walking through the corridor yeah. onto center court, and it's you know it's dark. You've got the lights going off. The fans are going wild. It just feels like. Yeah, a little bit of what it must feel like to be an NBA player, like walking out for one of the slam dunk competitions or something. This is kind of like what, why we all were sold on VR so quickly, mm -hmm. because it lets you do things that you don't normally get to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, like very, very few of us, probably very few of us watching, have ever gotten to be an NBA star. Yes. If yeah. you have, please leave a comment below. Yeah, you and Pat, like, we're very excited for, <laughs> for all of our new viewers. Um, It's... To be yeah, it does. It does a great job of like being like, yes, you are a famous basketball player, mm -hmm. and now everyone is watching you. The pressure's on. Yep. Here you go. And what do you get to do? Standing center court. Um, well, there's four different game types. There's a, a three point challenge where you have to have 25 balls that you shoot from three uh, three point areas in under a minute. Uh, there's my favorite, the skills challenge, which is this really interesting. Like uh, you're on the court, and there are these targets you have to throw the ball towards. But you have to keep your eyes focused on the target until the ball hits them. If you move away, the ball will hit and bounce off separately. So you've got to keep your eyes on the target, hit, and then move your eyes to the next, and move your eyes to the next. It doesn't sound like a lot, but actually at the, the higher levels, it gets real complicated and really difficult. Uh, there is the timed, which basically you have a minute to sink as many baskets as you can. And my second favorite, buzzer beater. You're standing there, there's a, a ball in a launcher, it launches at you, and as soon as you hit it, you've got like two seconds to find the ball, find the basket and toss the ball. Yeah. And you say this does use move controls. It uses the move controllers, yes. yes. I might be insane, but I don't remember having move controls when it first <laughs> launched. Uh, I'm, gonna go have to, I'm gonna have to go check that out, see yep. if I'm right or wrong about that. But for anyone interested, yes, it now has move controls. Yep. And uh, there's, there's uh, three level of difficulties, and on the basic, it's, Really, as long as you move your arms in a forward direction and you're very relatively close to the basket, it's going to go in. Sounds like my kind of difficulty, yeah. yeah. All the way to the uh, expert or pro, I think they call it, where it's it's full on one on one. You need to push with the right amount of pressure and aim properly to hit the baskets. Now, there's also power ups you can buy. Yeah, they're power ups that increase you know your your accuracy and and etc. But I didn't actually spend much time with the power ups because I liked I liked the challenge of being able to do it on my own. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was this was more more fun than it had any right being. Yeah, and it was just like all the stupid things that I know emotionally like this is, you know, this is shortcutting, but you make a shot and the crowd goes, hang, it freaks out. And like you get to the end of the level and just all this money starts raining down on you and it's great. And then actually in uh, some of the timed events, when you start getting close to the end, it gets a little, noticeably a little darker. Mm -hmm. Sweat runs down, yep. and you can hear your character like breathing hard. And it just it so adds to uh, the, the immersion um, that yeah, it, you know, if we have a drinking game 
all we would have to have is the word immersion mm -hmm. and half of our audience would be dead by the end of a show oh absolutely yeah oh yeah <laughs> um yeah, this this is a this this is a tough one too though because yes. fifteen bucks that is way too much for this exactly because it's it's I don't know it's luckily it's I I think on every VR sale I've seen this has also been on sale yeah so yeah. so definitely like I this is this is obviously a two for this me this is absolutely a two uh, because fifteen bucks seems a little too much but but definitely pick it up if it's I don't know like five bucks mm. or less it's the also the only one out of all these experiences that has any amount of replayability it's the only yeah. one of any of these that actually feels like a game <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I would be interested to see like you know they put so much work into this what they're kind of pitching as sort of like a demo you know i would i'd be interested to see like what a what would an nba 2k vr game be like like really difficult yes I yeah wonder interesting but so they did such a great job on this i would love to see more from this developer or in this in this genre i don't even know what no idea call it. yeah yeah but. it's tough because i think sports games i think would be very very tough to do spark uh, in vr at this point yeah uh just because just where the tech is and like where our you know our ability to move around environments and stuff well, instead of jumping from you can jump from player to player maybe so it's like psychonauts right but basketball, basketball. Hmm. That would Anyways. be amazing. I want Psychonauts basketball. Tim Schaefer, get on that. Please <laughs> and thank you. One more game that I, I want to briefly mention. Okay. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it just because, uh, because man, oh, man, we, we, we've been crapping on this game since the day it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, the Martian VR experience. Uh. Um, it, it's, it's, it's really bad. It's, uh, it came out as $20. And, Better. yeah, you can beat it, like, in, like, 20 minutes or something like that. And it's a dollar a minute. And it's, like, various scenes from the movie that you get to play out, and I don't think any of them are... You start off sorting potatoes, like, so it's, like, yeah, yeah. like tangentially, like, related to things that happen in the movie, but never actually movie scenes. Uh, and then between each little experience section, or, like, each little thing that you get to do, mm -hmm. uh, there's, like, this big... 2D, yeah, uh, like a little clip from 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 The Martian, the movie, and it's it's those clips that where Matt Damon is like talking to his computer, like right, his, his right. video journal, and it's just really bad. They eventually dropped the price from twenty to ten dollars, and it's still not enough. Um, I really I hate everything about this thing. Yeah. It is a one through and through. Like I don't a one, a three. It's, it's a three. I still yeah. don't know our scale. <laughs> it's a three through and through. It, like. I, I hate rewarding these guys, like, it, but what pisses me off the most is that it, it comes from Fox Interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, so they didn't. It, it sounds like they didn't farm it out to anybody. It's like this is like they're like, oh, let's see if we can get away with this. Yeah. And then we heard that they were making like an alien VR experience, and I was like, they probably didn't make the alien VR experience because the Martian one didn't sell well. Yeah. But you're not getting it. We want the alien VR thing. We just don't want it to be anything like the thing you created. Yeah. It's like we want you to make games. We just want them to be better. Yeah. The Martian sucks. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess final words, man. Um, I don't mind. I don't have the knee-jerk. Experiences are bad. Nope. Because I think a VR experience, it's one place where, you know, where non-gaming VR can really shine. I want to be able to go to the Himalayas. I want to be able to see what it's like from the point of view of, you know, Matt Damon's character in The Martian. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Weir. No, Andy Weir is the author. Anyways, um, you know, I, I would love to have that experience. Right. But if you're using it as a commercial, don't make me pay for it. Right. There are yeah. so many ways to get your VR experience into gamers' hands uh, without making them pay for it or without, let's be fair, mm -hmm. without letting them know they're paying for it. Right? If you want to be all sneaky about it, because I know you do, <laughs> here's what you do. It's like, first of all, like you can, you can tack it onto a Blu-ray. Right? Perfect. Every single PlayStation 4 can play a Blu-ray, yep. right? So you just put, like, you know, a bonus feature, the Martian VR experience. Put this in your PlayStation 4, and you char charge a couple extra bucks for right. your Blu-ray, yep. right? It's like, oh, sweet. And every single community out there, every single PlayStation VR gamer will be like, hey, make sure you pick up the Blu-ray because we'll let's get a VR experience on yep. it. Crazy, right? It's I, like I, was, I was already going to buy the movie. Look at what I got for free. I wasn't going to buy the movie, and it comes to the VR game. Now I'm going to buy the movie. Exactly. Yep. And, then on, and on top of that, like, you know, I don't, I've been saying this for a while, and I don't know if it's even feasible. Mm -hmm. But with every single purchase of a uh, like of a movie ticket, like have a have a little sure. PlayStation code on Why there, not? right? 
Is it, why, why not? Like, go, so, so you go see the movie, and then you get home, and you haven't had enough of the movie. Yep. You know, you can you can redeem the code that way. Um, I, I don't. There's there's so many ways to get your game into yep. consumers' hands without just putting it up on the store and making them feel like they got ripped off. Yeah. If I, I mean, if I want to play it once for less than five minutes, you best not be charging me for this. Yeah. 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 Sorry. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, this is I, these are early days of VR. Mm. We knew this was going to be the case. We yep. knew that it was going to take a long time for developers to get to wrap their hands, wrap their minds around VR and creating games for it. We also knew that like a lot of companies, a lot of developers were holding off a little bit, saying, "Is this thing going to sell?" Yep. Because we don't want to spend a ton of time and a ton of money making a big triple A game or even a single A or B game, whatever. For something that doesn't have doesn't have a market, something that like we like, there are seventy million mm-hmm. PlayStation fours out there. Yeah, there are only two million PSVRs. What are you going to make your game for? Right, which one has the bigger yeah. audience? The deal is, two million PlayStation VR owners are interested in your game. Yes, I will tell you that not two million PlayStation four owners are interested in whatever <laughs> you're making for that system yeah. because we're ravenous. But the PlayStation VR community is ravenous, and they want everything you can give them. Just keep that in mind. Just don't sell us yeah. crap. Please. Or at least don't make us pay for it. <laughs> Please and thank you. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it. We're definitely running long yes. for another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. I'm Bri- uh, Is this what we do? I'm Brian yeah. Paul. I'm Desra. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>